Casino games and films are some of the hardest action scenes to get right. Not only do you have to make it look interesting and keep it dramatic, but there's also a ton of rules and small touches to keep it genuine. In this top 5, we take a look at films about the casino that didn't quite capture the games. They made characters make stupid choices for no reason, ignored important aspects of the game, or simply got absolutely everything wrong. Check. Or check. Four players. In the final hand of Casino Royale, everything goes on the line as Bond, the villain the Chifra, and these two other characters we don't really care much about, battle it out for the final win. Our problem with this scene is from Le Chiffre's point of view. Le Chiffre is supposed to be a maths genius, who is brilliant at poker due to his ability to make accurate predictions about the game. Le Chiffre at this point in the game has a 6, which makes a good full house, but his hand can still be beaten by either an ace 8, which is a better full house, or a straight flush, which is an incredibly lucky hand to be dealt. It eventually turns out in the film that Bond obviously has that crazy improbable hand because of his movie character magic powers. But even though Le Chiffre doesn't know he's in a Bond film, it's still very irrational for him to take the bet. Before Le Chiffre calls, everyone on the table has gone all in, except for Le Chiffre, who still has $27 million left, with a total pot standing at $87.5 million. Our problem is this. With everyone on the table having gone all in, it's actually quite possible that someone may have had a better full house than him. 40,500,000 all in. Since all the people on the table are confident enough to put themselves out of the game on this hand alone, Le Chiffre has a choice at this point. If he folds, he still has money left, which means he can knock out two other players and then save some cash to play against the winner one on one, with a lot of money still on his side. If he goes all in, he has a reasonable chance to be beaten and he'll lose and then, naturally, get murdered by some of the most violent men in the criminal underworld. Sadly, he doesn't take the smart option, loses and then dies. At least he gets to torture Bond for a while, which is... Actually, probably not worth it. Run Lola Run is a German thriller from 1996, which shows the same story of a woman trying to save her boyfriend from gangsters by bringing them a large sum of money with only 20 minutes to spare. The film shows her repeat three versions of the same event, each time getting closer than the last. In the final version of events, Lola heads straight to a casino, betting her final 100 marks on the number 20 in roulette twice in a row. She wins a total of 126,000 marks, just enough to save her boyfriend after having him die two times before. Not only would this statistically almost never happen, but it's funny that from Lola's perspective, this was her first attempt at saving her boyfriend's life. So she heads straight to the casino. Not the smartest money-making scheme, but since we love this film, we'll give it a pass, even if it is completely ridiculous. When the guys in the hangover realize they need a lot of money to help find their friend, they pull a run Lola run and turn to the fastest money-making scheme they can find the casino. Using the group idiot Allen's newfound card counting skills, the group embarked to take the casino for everything it's worth by breaking the blackjack tables. It doesn't take too long before the casino security spot what they're up to, but when they come to shut it down, the group escape using a distraction. Here's our problem oh, though. If all the money they won is an otherwise worthless casino chips and security know who they are, how did they ever manage to cash out and leave the casino with the money in tow? Oh, with all this, that's $82,400. Oh, God damn it, I don't fucking believe it. Woo! The jackpot, lads. God knows how much of this stinking weight. A shitload of cash. And a traffic order. Any problem that happens in Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels starts with the initial high-stakes game of three-card brag that young hustler Eddie decides to buy into. Running the game is the notorious gangster mob boss, Harry, who has a reputation for being incredibly violent and untrustworthy. So, no problems there. In the final hand for Eddie, Eddie has run low on funds and so has to effectively fold and just lose most of his cash, or borrow money from somebody else. It's a loan, or we see both your cards. Like, say, our hyper-violent mob boss here, Harry. Eddie does the smart thing and takes the cash. 
The only way he can win at this point is by bluffing Harry into folding. Harry does have weak cards, but sadly, Eddie has even worse cards, making this a really terrible move. Given that Harry just fronted him a big loan, it probably wouldn't be the case that Harry would fold, since he really has nothing to lose, since he gets his money back either way. We know this is Eddie being cocky and shows he's less of a card player and more of a trickster, but it's a stupid play nonetheless that costs him a lot of money and problems. And it made Sting unhappy. Jackson Queens. Two pairs good, sir. Please don't take this as a recommendation. Lucky You has to be one of the most boring films we've ever seen. Not just from the casino genre, but in general. Deuces the winner. The film is a father and son story, but this time set at the poker tables as the two resolve their relationship through playing world championship poker. Lucy and Pat Chuba, the first time ever a father and son have competed against each other at the final table of the World Series. It's as contrived as you can get, but the ending takes it to a whole other level. In the final poker showdown, worth over a million dollars, the two battle it out for the grand prize, whilst the third player, played by an actual real-life poker pro, just awkwardly smiles in the corner. The two go all in, with the son having the better hand. When his dad reveals his hand, the son simply folds, giving his dad the prize. Here's the problem, though. Nothing happens between the two to make him change his mind like this. If anything, his dad is more of a jerk at the tables than anywhere else in the movie, so giving him a million dollars probably won't help matters. But the game inaccuracy is mind-blowing. Since everyone's all in, players have to reveal their cards if they remain to the end of the round. This is a common house rule to stop players fixing the winner. That means afterwards, the son would have had to awkwardly reveal and win anyway. If we were writing a poker championship film, we might have had a quick Google of the rules first. Thanks for watching the latest Droid Slots Top 5. You can see loads more videos like this by checking out our channel, and if you like this Top 5 and want to let us know about it, then go ahead and comment, like, or subscribe. We'll see you next week with an all new video. Thanks for watching.